Good evening, my viewers. This is the latest edition of the George On Deck Show. Get On Deck with George. For the first time, I'm covering someone announcing for running for president of the United States. And I'm very honored because I'm a Pete Skillite. I've lived, lived here for the past 26 years. And Governor George Pataki, he will always be Governor Pataki that's and right. Mayor Pataki. Right. Yes, that's right. And his family, Farmers Pataki, where I bought fruit and vegetables for yeah, them for many right. years, yeah. um, <laughs> will be announcing his bid for President of the United States. But I'm now joined by uh, Councilman Joe Torres. Yes, yes, how are Joe, you? Joe, what is hey. your feelings about uh, Governor Pataki? Oh, I think he has common sense, and uh, I think we need common sense, and, you know, in, in today's world of politics and uh, I think it's exciting you know he's he's done a great job when he was governor he was here through 9-11 uh, so I think he has a lot of experience and he's in the middle of the road I think that and that's what we need right now he didn't do a bad job as mayor of Peekskill either I heard right? not at all he did a great job with Peekskill um, and, you know, and it's good to see someone that wants to step up and, and get in, involved in the United States. And I States. understand this lady with you is a citizen of Peekskill who cares about her city. Yes, and what's she does. your name? My name is Christina Fisher. Christina Fisher. What do you think about Governor Pat Pataki's bid for governor? I, I think it's wonderful. Well, governor, president. Yeah, president, of the yes. President He's Pataki. <laughs> absolutely wonderful. He's a great guy. I have lived in Peekskill for 44 years. I was living here during his administration. He did wonderful things for all of his friends and neighbors. And I hear you really care for Pete Skill, and I'm going to hit them with breaking news tonight, and it's okay because <laughs> this is not going to show till after. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I hear you're running for council person in Pete Skill. I am. Along with Frank uh, Catalina. Is that his name, Frank Catalina? The yes, mayor? yes, absolutely. And Brendan Fitzgerald. And who is the other fellow who's running? Herbert Reyes. Uh -huh. He's a wonderful man. And you want to bring Pete Skill back to where it was before, moving forward. We right? want to move forward. We don't want to go backwards. We want to move it forward. Okay. And, and you truly care about the people of Pete Skill. That's absolutely. Great. Okay, I thank you. Let's go in and see the governor announce for president. Yes. Welcome everyone, hopefully you can hear this. Thank you for being here today, welcoming home the next President of the United States, George Pataki. <laughs> it's so wonderful to have George and Libby here today. We're so appreciative, uh, Mr. Governor, that you decided to come and do this here at the Lincoln Depot. We would not be here at the Lincoln Depot if it wasn't for you, Governor, and thank you very much for that. My name is John Testa. I'm the county legislator for this area, also a former mem uh, mayor of Peekskill, but today I'm the president of the Lincoln Depot Museum, and I want to welcome all of you here. Uh, we have members of the board, Kathy Bazzani and Dr. Bob Hales here as well. We welcome you to the Lincoln Depot Museum, New York's most unique and only one-of-a-kind museum devoted to Lincoln and his uh, influence on New York's influence on uh, his elections and the Civil War. So thank you for being here.
before we hear from the man himself, we have a number of people here who want to welcome him and wish him well wishes on his way. Uh, we're going to start uh, with an assemblyman, Rea, from uh, nearby to come up and say a few words. I'll, I'll be very brief. Uh, it's an honor. Uh, what's a Long Island Assemblyman doing here in Peekskill? Well, it's on the way to Albany, quite honestly. And uh, I wouldn't miss an opportunity to be with my, my good friend and really mentor, George Pataki. You know, when I first met him, uh, I was working for an assembly member uh, when you were still in the assembly. Yes. And uh, then I had the, the proud honor of working on your first campaign for governor. And uh, I seem to recall that uh, the press back then and a lot of naysayers said, there's no way you could possibly take on a Cuomo. Well, we all know what happened there, right? So when those same media folks and naysayers say, there's no way you can take on a Clinton, what do we say? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we Governor, can. I'm with you all the way, and uh, we look forward to great things ahead. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Next, I'd like to call up our Deputy County Executive here uh, in Westchester County, Kevin Plunkett, along with the Chief of Staff, the County Executive Astorino, George Oros. All right. All right. It's my great honor to be here today on behalf of our County Executive, Rob Astorino, joined by one of Cortland's favorite sons, George Oros, fellow Hungarian. Uh, <laughs> when I left home today to cover a couple of events, I asked my wife, what's for dinner? She said, Hungarian stew. So how appropriate, huh? We, the goulash, right? The Irish call it Hungarian stew. But you know, Abraham Lincoln stopped here in Peekskill. And how appropriate that one of our nation's greatest presidents had the wisdom and understanding to come here to Peekskill. So today in Peekskill, we are kicking off another presidential run, and it's going to be a successful presidential run for George Pataki. <laughs> Our county executive, Rob Astorino, when he looks for guidance on issues, the first person he calls is our next president of the United States, George Pataki. <laughs> I look out and I see so many people here who were with George Pataki when he started his mayoral race and then the assembly and the Senate and the gov gubernatorial mansion up in Albany. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be there in January of 2017 when George Pataki is inaugurated as President of the United States. And Peekskill's favorite son will be the President of the United States. George, congratulations. We have a uh, couple legislators from Putnam County here, Joe Castellano and Kevin Wright. Carl Albano as well, please come on up. It's a great honor and a pleasure to be here in Peekskill. Uh, those of us in Putnam County, we love this guy. We look forward. This is the best person we can have to run for president coming out of the Hudson Valley, coming out of the United States. And we are fired up in Putnam County for our next great president. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. 
just like to say it's an amazing time to see what we have here, something to make us so proud. We know what New York, where New York was going a few years ago when the governor was in place, and this is what we need for the whole country. I'm thrilled and I'm excited and I'm proud to be here. here thank here. you and good luck. Thank you. I want to step up and tell you folks that uh, in almost a 40-year career in the criminal justice system, when we send this gentleman to the White House, no one in the history of the state of New York did as much for victims' rights and for the criminal justice system here in New York, and nobody will do as much for victims of crimes and the uh, criminal justice system, which is sorely in need of reform in the whole of the United States of America. This is the man who did it in a democratic state of New York. He brought reforms and he brought a new way of thinking about how we could uh, control crime and improve our streets. And this is the man that will bring that absolute judgment and clarity to the whole of the United States of America when he takes the throne at the White House. God bless you, George Pataki. You know, that's Kevin, Kevin, thank you. I think it's the other party that wants to take the throne. I just want to take the office. That's right. <laughs> yeah. oh. Next, I'd like to bring up the current mayor of the city of Peekskill, Frank Catalina, who's going to introduce his council members. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. And I just want to welcome George and Libby back home. And no matter where you go, George, you always say, no matter where you go, Peekskill is home. And Peekskill will always be your home. God bless you both. I want to just uh, uh, recognize my great, great Deputy Mayor, Joe Torres, who's there with me helping make this city a great place. As you know, as you know, Peekskill has a lot to do. And we're, you know, we still have blockage. So we have here today with us Tina Fisher, Herb Reyes, and Brendan Fitzgerald to help us get the job done. So those of you here from Peekskill, remember them in November. I need them to get the job done. Uh, George, we're just uh, so happy to be here. And they just told me to be brief, so I'm just going to step aside. And I just want to thank you personally for all that you've done for me in my career. I want to thank you for making my job here as mayor of the Peekskill a lot easier. And just in case you miss some of the faces out there, I just want you to know some of the longtime families that are here from Peekskill to wish you the best. I look out and I see uh, Phil Hirsch out here, Larry Gomez, Greg Lazat, George Ondek. Everybody's here. Mike uh, Franzoso's here from Croton. They're all here for you because of what you've done for this area, and what you've done for this state. This country sorely needs you. God bless you and Godspeed. Next, I'd like to call up a good friend of mine who knows, uh, who the governor knows a little bit about the position he's in right now. And that's our state senator, Terrence Murphy. Well, this is absolutely an incredible honor and a privilege to be able to stand here and get behind a guy who has walked the walk, is one of us, from the ground up. He has been the mayor here. He's been an assemblyman. He's been a senator. He was our governor, and now he will be our president. Yeah. Common sense isn't so common in politics, but let me tell you, we're going to have an incredible leader here because you can see what's going on in America here, and we absolutely need to change direction, and George Pataki has the direction that we need to go in. Thank you. sign of good things to come, making a good call early. Good thing we moved inside, huh? Uh, there's a couple other people I want to mention who are here today. Uh, we have former Mayor Fran Gibbs here, former mayor of the city of Peekskill. <laughs> former Westchester County Legislator Tim Carey is here somewhere in the audience with his Yankee hat on. And another former mayor, Vinnie Vesey, who's the local GOP chairman, is here today. 
Who wants to say a few words? Of course. <laughs> of course. Have we met? <laughs> this all began in 1981. When the, this fella here, I know, you're on a, you're on a short leash, I got it. 1981, he calls, he says, uh, listen, I'm going to run for mayor of the city of Peekskill. And I said, okay, great. Do anything we can do to help you. He says, well, let's all run together. And we did, where the hell have you been the last 34 years? <laughs> this is the fella that put a whole new emphasis on how great Peekskill could be back in 1982 when the folks here in Peekskill were smart enough to elect him as their mayor. He <laughs> he took leadership of a city that was in real trouble back then. If you haven't looked recently, our country's in real trouble right now. This is the guy that can make it happen in Washington, D.C., as he did in Peekskill. Support him, he's the man. George, you're the Perfect, Vinny. Yeah. Well, you got off the golf course just in time. <laughs> By the way, Boo's here too. <laughs> okay, Boo Vesey, uh, Councilman of the City of Peekskill, is here as well. Yep. Before we bring the man of the hour up, I just want you to think about some historical perspective. Back in 1859, in a city called Springfield, Illinois, a guy was walking around there thinking about running for president. Nobody really knew him outside of, of the state, but they knew within the city of, of Springfield and within the st a state of Illinois that they had something special. They had the person with the right stuff to be the president of the United States. All they needed to do was make sure that the rest of the country got a chance to see what that person could do. And when they did, they overwhelmingly made sure that he was not president once but twice through tough times in the country. And now we have an opportunity as we see our George Pataki become a nominee for the Republican uh, GOP primary race. And as he moves up and gets noticed more and more by the country, we know he is going to be eventually the GOP nominee and eventually the President of the United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it all happened in New York for Lincoln, and it's happening here with our Governor Pataki. The next President of the United States, George Pataki. you for your kind words. Uh, Vinny, you didn't have to get dressed for me. It was okay. <laughs> let, let me thank all of you for being here. I'm home. Yeah. 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 Wherever I am, and I know we have a lot of good people from Putnam County here, and at the moment I'm living in Putnam County, but wherever I am, wherever I go, this is my home, this is where my values were formed, and this is where I will always, always have my heart. So it's great to be back here. Uh, I look around the room and see so many friends from all over, and thank you for being here. Uh, and, and Joe and Teresa y las otras, mis amigos están con nosotros soy. It's great to have such a diverse group here with us this morning. Thank you. That's what America is about. You know, I look and I see people like Kathy and Vinny and Fran and Phil and others. And I remember when I ran for mayor, and I had a slight chance. <laughs> then I remember when I ran for the state assembly, and I had a slightly smaller chance. Then I remember when I ran for the state senate, and we had a very small chance. <laughs> then I remember when I ran for governor, and people didn't think I had any chance. <laughs> Let's go do it again. Thank you. 
You know, I announced Thursday in Exeter, New Hampshire, that I am running for president. And I talked about my upbringing here in Peekskill. How, as many of you know, I grew up on a small farm just a couple of miles from here. And the values it taught me of family and faith and friends and self-reliance. You had a problem. You didn't ask the government to fix it. You figured out what was wrong and went and did it. That's the American way. And then I think about those values. And I think of when I was in college. And I think of my grandfather and my cousins and others at a factory maybe a little, maybe a little over a mile south of here in Peekskill that was called the Fleischmann's factory. My grandfather worked there and when I was growing up, when I went off to college, Christmas vacation, I worked there with my cousin Bobby on the midnight shift. Summer vacation, I would work there. I understand the hopes and the dreams and the importance of a job for everyone. I remember those summer Friday afternoons when I would be working at the Fleischmann's plant and the foreman would come along and things would be slow and you dread the thought that you might get a pink slip and too often I got that pink slip and it meant that next Monday they didn't want you to report to work. I remember other times when I was working and things were really busy at the factory and come 3.30 or 4 o'clock you'd be thinking you know maybe we can get two or three four or four hours of overtime and what it would mean to have those three or four hours of additional pay in your check at the end of the week so you can pay your bills. When I talk about our economy, when I talk about the need for jobs, when I talk about the need for putting people first and head, ahead of politicians, it's not something I studied in school. It's something I learned right here on the farm, in the factory, on the street. I'll tell you the most important thing I learned in Peekskill, and I learned it from my parents and our neighbors and our family and friends, that the greatness of this country comes from its people. Those of you who grew up in Peekskill know it wasn't a wealthy community. It wasn't an insular community. It was a diverse community. We had black and white, Christian, Jew. We had every people all living together. And yet we all understood that if we worked hard and studied hard and had family and friends and faith, we could accomplish anything. The American dream was real because the strength of America wasn't a distant government. It was the neighbor living next to you, the person going to school, the person working in the corner store when you stopped in the morning to get something on your way to school. The greatness of this country is its people. But if you look at Washington today, they believe the greatness of this country is its politicians. Well, let me tell you something. John was talking about how our country is at risk, and I believe our freedom is at risk, and it's at risk in two ways. First, from a narrow group of elitist people distant in Washington who believe the people can't make their own decisions and that they need to dictate to us how we live our lives. They want to tell us everything we can do from the health care that every single American has to have to what every child in every school and every community across America must be taught. That's not America. That's not faith in people. We have got to stop that and take this country right. back. <laughs> that factory and what the job went to my, meant to my grandfather when he worked there and what it meant to me when I was there in the summer. And today too many Americans don't have jobs. And it's not because we don't have the greatest workforce in the world. It's not because we don't have entrepreneurs and risk takers and people willing to work 12 hour days, seven days a week. It's because we have a government that taxes too much, spends too much, regulates too much, dictates too much, and prevents business from growing the jobs the American people live, need in this country today. And let me just tell you a few things I'd do. We're going to take back this country. Today, over 400 former members of Congress in Washington are lobbyists. Both parties, both houses, you get elected, your career's over, you don't go home. You know, if you play the game, you stay in Washington, you make 10 times as much as if you go home. They start representing the special interests and not the public interests. I would pass a law. I would pass a law. You 
serve one day in Congress, there is a lifetime ban on your ever being a lobbyist in Washington. <laughs> Politicians think they're different and somehow better than us. They pass a law like Obamacare telling us what we have to do, but then they exempt themselves. The law doesn't apply to them. It doesn't apply to their staffs. Another law I will pass, you pass a law that affects the American people, it's going to apply to Congress, to the members, and to every staff person in Washington. They have to be part of us. Think about the taxes in this country. Our tax law, 74,600 pages of incomprehensible, lawyer-written, lobbyist-driven, special interest-protecting gobbledygook. We have got to throw that entire mess out, have a simple tax code that is fairer, lower, and that will allow us to create jobs and opportunity instead of protecting the powerful and the rich in Washington. Yeah. You know, I get a little passionate about this. <laughs> because I know the greatness of the people of this country. I know the unlimited potential of this country. I know what we could do if we simply got big, intrusive, expensive government out of the way of the people of America, and I know that I can do that. Second, <laughs> the, second the second threat to our freedom, and it grows stronger every day, is the threat of radical Islam attacking us, not over there, but here in the United States of America again. I was governor. I was governor on September 11th. And I saw the horrors of that day. In fact, right near here, there's a statue to Sammy Otis, a young firefighter from Peekskill, New York. I knew his father. He actually volunteered on my campaign, who was one of the heroes who went into that building and died on September 11th. I will never forget the lesson that because radical Islam is thousands of miles away, separated by an ocean that they don't pose a threat to us here in America today, they do. We have got to attack them over there, kill them over there before they have the chance to kill us here. Let me just for a minute say that it's not me, it's not just me running for president. When you make this decision, you don't do it in a vacuum or alone. You do it as a family and together. And every one of those crazy efforts from mayor to governor, I have had a partner not always by my side because a lot of times she was out in front helping to make sure we carried the day and were able to help the people of our state, and that's my dear wife, Libby. Thank you. God bless you. And I was thinking of that, not because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to go home tonight, but that's always a possibility. But I was doing it because when I think about radical Islam, and our need to protect ourselves over there from attacks here. I think of our two sons, Teddy and Ellen. Many of you know them. We have two sons. Teddy, after college, went into the Marines, became a lieutenant, served a year in Iraq. Owen, after college, went into the 10th Mountain Division, became a lieutenant, and just got back from Afghanistan in September. I know what it's like. Libby and I both know what it's like late at night to be tossing and turning, worrying about a phone call in the middle of the night that you dread might come. I do not want to put young, one young person's life at risk from this country unless it's absolutely necessary. But when it is necessary, we cannot look the other way. We must protect the American people. The most important thing government does is provide for the security and safety of its people. I will do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
know, we are here at one of the few places where Abraham Lincoln spoke on his way to assume the presidency back in 1861. And you know, yes, we have challenges facing our country today, but think of the challenge Lincoln faced at that time. A country divided almost in half. A war to separate half the country from the rest. Thousands and thousands of casualties. Many northerners not supporting Lincoln's effort to keep the Union together. And yet he understood two things. One is that the promise of American freedom wasn't for some, it was every, for everyone, and he was going to work hard and, if necessary, die to make sure the promise of that freedom existed for every single American. And the second is, whatever the cost, he was not going to let this country divide itself and fall apart. Look at the challenges he faced compared to what we face today. They're, they seem trivial. There's no question that when we stand together, we will be able to meet the challenges we face, we will be able to rise above those challenges and accomplish so much more to make our lives in this great country even better. You know, I mentioned about growing up in Peekskill and how diverse the community was and how we all pulled together and understood what we, could put, what we had in common. Let's understand that again. Whatever might seem to divide us, we're all Americans. We have common dreams, we have hom common hopes, a common future. Let's stand together, work together, protect our freedom in Washington and abroad, empower the American people, and I can guarantee you the 21st century is going to be the greatest century America has ever seen. Stand with me, work with me, let's go forward, and let's win this victory for the American people. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you. For the first time on the George Ondek Show, he's announcing a presidential candidate, Governor George E. Pataki of Peekskill, and I now have the mayor of Peekskill with me, the Honorable Frank Catalina. Frank, how you doing, do you think, George? What do you think of George Pataki? Uh, What's the E stand for in his name? I don't know. You Elmer? Elmer is right. How did yeah, I know? yeah. So I won a prize, well, Mr. It's a, mayor. Well, a lot of people know that. So, so I must really be a big right. fan of his, right? That's right. Name his four children. I've he gave you two. Uh, I can't name them. All right. Melissa, I know. No, not no, Melissa. No, 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 I'm Melissa. Uh, Owen, Teddy, uh, how about Emily, and Allison. Allison wrote a book, number right. one bestseller, and she's got a second and book she out. Does. Number one bestseller. Well, uh, these people want to hear about that? Or? Okay, we want to hear about Governor George Pataki and how Frank Catalina supports him. Oh, we support George Pataki, not because he's from Peekskill, but because he has the right ideas for this country with the right ideas for this country are tough, conservative on the fiscal issues, moderate on the social issues, and very, very, very tough on the foreign affairs. They get this country back on the right track again. Uh, Frank, you know I'm a transported Yonkersite, but I came here 26 years ago and I saw the Pataki family working on a farm. George has come a long way, like you. Yes, he, he has. became a lawyer, then he became mayor of Peekskill, governor and now possibly president um, we're very proud of we're very proud of George Pataki and his entire family but more importantly what he's done for Peekskill the the imprint of George Pataki on this city is just as great as Chauncey Depew or William Halstead or Bill Nelson all of the famous people that have come from this city George ranks right up there with him, and by the time I'm finished being mayor, we will have the appropriate honor for George Pataki. And Frank, I have to be sort of impartial because I do a TV show, but he's been the mayor of my town, the governor. He gave the um, STAR program to middle class taxpayers. It gives us all a break. He's for the average person, the middle class person, and I think he offers an alternative in our party, the Republican Party, to the arch conservatives. He's more middle of the road uh, Republican who's for the people. Absolutely, couldn't agree with you more. Okay, Mr. Frank Catalina, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I'm now with the mayor's mother of Peekskill, Fran. 
You don't have a K on the end of your name. How come? K? You know, it's like Frank. Frank, <laughs> you know. Um, well, uh, I named him. What do you think of Governor George Pataki and his chances on becoming President of the United States? He will win. He took governor, and everyone said he'd never be, make governor, and he took New York. And he's going to win for the whole country. And we wh need him. What do you think of your son, who uh, everybody said couldn't become mayor of Peekskill, but he overcame? You've said the same thing about him. I think you're a good luck omen, friend. I am. I love my son, and I'm very proud of his work he's doing. And he's going to do a great job again. Will he right. be reelected this year? Well, I don't like to jinx him, so, so I'm going to work he keeps hard. If okay. he keeps working My audience, as hard as he is. is Fran Catalina. Hello, everyone. N not his sister. My wife thought it was his sister. She looked so young. Thank but you. But it's his mom. He used to knock on the window of a telephone office when she was an operator on his way to school. Thank you, Mrs. Catalina. Thank you Thank so you. much, George, for Thank everything. You, Thank You're you. the best. Thank you. You're I the love best. Your show. You're number one. And I love all you do for the community with the flags, and I respect you immensely. As a veteran, right? As a veteran. And a family man who's been married 51 years, Fran. <laughs> Can you believe that? I think that's wonderful. Thank you, dear. You Thank brought you. up a great son there. Thank you. I'm with Governor Pataki here. What is your view for America when you become president, Mr. Mr. Governor? You know, I've always believed when the elections are over, the politics should be over. Uh, we all have so much in common, a common destiny, a common future. And Yes, we're going to have differences during the campaigns, but as governor of New York and even here when I was mayor, we'd always try to work together once it was over in the public interest. And I want to see Americans understand that our future will be better when we appreciate each other and work together. A few things I like about you very much, Mr. Governor. You're for the middle class. You passed the STAR program. Yes. That helps middle class people yes. who are retired so much. You're a family man. I used to buy fruit at your yeah. fruit stand yes. with your mom and dad and yep. your daughters. Yep. And you should be very proud of Allison. Not is it Allison? Allison, yes. Number one bestseller on the New York Times list, and she's got a second book out. Allison's made the the New York Times bestseller list twice. I'm proud of all our kids. I mentioned the two who served overseas, and Emily's about to have her second child, and still a brilliant really? lawyer. So, so I've been blessed with a wonderful family. This country has let me live my dreams and I want it to be the place where people born today can live their dreams. And you do believe in family values. Absolutely. Your dad was such a great guy, Louie, yes. and they named a, a, a development after him now, yeah. Louie Court, a friend of mine lives on it. Yeah. Well, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Governor, you will always be the governor. I'm going to suggest something today. This is Lincoln Center here yes. in Peekskill. Yes. They should have a Pataki uh, Plaza named yeah. after <laughs> Thank you, well, George. Thank you. I'm I'm honored just to be in Lincoln's uh, former presence here. I'm thank always you. honored to be in your presence, but I feel like little George in <laughs> Pete's Gill and you're big George. Well, good, good luck, to see Mr. You, Mayor. I'm now with two citizens of Pete's Gill, Brendan Fitzgerald and his lovely wife, Lindsay, Lindsay Fitzgerald. You were just here at the rally for Governor George Pataki. What is your opinion on amazing Mr. speech, Pataki. President Pataki, soon to be? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And I do, look forward to voting for him to represent our country. how do you feel about that, um, uh, Lindsay, being a lady uh, voting for president this year? Oh, well, I'm full support for Pataki. So you're not for Hillary then, right? No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, okay. Pataki all the way. But I got breaking news on the George On Deck show tonight. Breaking uh, news. Yes, not only is uh, George Pataki, uh, Governor George Pataki, running for president, we are hearing rumors in the community that you are running for city council. Yes, sir, I will be running for city council for the on, city of Peekskill. On the Republican ticket, along with Mayor Frank Catalina, and who are the other two people? Yes, sir, I'll be on Catalina's team, and it's going to be myself, Tina Fisher, and Herb Reyes. Okay, I'm close. I'm closing out the George on deck show now, Mike. <laughs> and uh, with this lovely couple, we've had a great day here at the Lincoln Memorial. Uh oh, uh, Lincoln Memorial. Uh, it's the first time in my 20 years on TV I've had a presidential candidate 
on with me. It's Governor George E. Pataki, Pete Skills' own mayor, governor, former, and next president of the United States. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks, thank George. You. We are now closing out the Get On Deck show with George On Deck. I'm very honored to have John Testa with me. He has many titles. Councilman, <laughs> mayor, all good, all good mayor, uh, uh, Westchester County uh, ex executive. No, legislator. Legislator, <laughs> possible governor someday. But he also is the head, all kidding aside, he's the head of the Lincoln Society. He's the president. The Lincoln Depot Foundation and Museum. What did you think today of Governor George Pataki announcing here in Peekskill that he's running for president of the United States? Well, not only did he announce here in Peekskill, but he announced here at the Lincoln Depot Museum uh, without George Pataki as governor, this museum would not be in existence. He got us the funding and he knew the dream we had to make this museum a reality with this original historic building in Peekskill. So because of him, we have this museum. So for him to pick this location to have his uh, homecoming rally for his run for president was a particular honor for us. And I, he, I see a resemblance here. A tall man running for president. Didn't somebody stop in 1865 on his way to the White House when everybody said he didn't have a chance in the world of becoming president? Yeah, in 1861 in February, uh, Abraham Lincoln did stop here on his way to his inauguration. Uh, as I was uh, said inside, um, Lincoln was a relatively unknown outside of Illinois back when he first ran in 1859, just like our George Bataki uh, yeah. countrywide. We know how great he is here in New York and uh, obviously Peekskill, but once the rest of the country gets to know him and he starts climbing and they realize uh, that he has the best credentials, as I didn't get to say inside, the pundits are already saying he is the man with the most qualifications to be president in the race, so uh, I think he's going to do well. John, yeah. I've only been living here in Peekskill for 26 years, but I've seen Mr. Pataki in action. He's a great family man. His f father worked very hard on the uh, farm they had. They yes. came up from very humble beginnings and he's for the middle class. He, he passed the STAR program which gives all us homeowners a big tax break. George Pataki has a record of tax cutting, economic development growth, and he has something that um, people will learn as well. He has a very um, top level uh, qualifications in the environmental field. He's, he preserved more land than any other governor in New York State. Uh, open access and self and preservation of historic properties like this one here. So when that record gets out, he's, people are going to realize just how well-rounded he is. And should everybody come on down and visit this Lincoln Museum here in Peekskill, New York, my hometown? Well, we would love people to come down. It's a unique museum. It's the only one of its kind in New York. It's dedicated not only to Abraham Lincoln, the man, but also his influence, the influence of New York on him, his elections, and the Civil War. We have a great influence. New York was a very important part of the Civil War, and we tell that story here. My viewers, this has been the George On Deck Show, the first presidential announcement on my show. Till next time, vote and vote for president next year and vote the right way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you George. And thanks to all these lovely people thank who are backing uh, thanks, Mr. George. Pataki. Thank, thank you, George. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, too. <laughs>